Hello Internet! Welcome back to episode 3 of Living It Up in Lion City. This podcast is about life in Singapore from the perspective of A, a foreigner, that is me, and B, a Singaporean, that is Raj, who is not here with us because he had other things to do, namely sleeping off his hangover, so fuck you, Raj! <laughs> <laughs> and, but we do have three guests with us, three Singaporeans, who will be talking to us about the topic at hand. So let me introduce a special guest, Derek. Hi, Derek. Hello. We have another special guest, Sushant. Hi. And a very special guest. Ling. Hi, Hi Ling. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you guys who have been listening to our podcast, I want to thank you all for listening to it. And in our very first episode, we talked about what it meant when people talked about Singapore lacking soul. Now, I have, I've always been of the opinion that that kind of sentiment was bullshit and born of a very blinkered view from a predominantly Eurocentric point of view. Having said this, what is very interesting was that following that particular podcast and a bunch of other things that I was talking about with friends on Facebook, was that this is an opinion that's shared by a lot of people, both local and uh, foreign. So. The, the topic of today's podcast is about why is it that s- there is a perception that Singapore lacks soul, and perhaps we can explore some of the facets of it. So Derek, Sushant, Ling, welcome to our amazing podcast. Oh, it's, <laughs> good to be, it's good to be here. <laughs> it is. <laughs> right. um, it's, once again, it's good to have you guys again. Um, we did have a fantastic conversation the last time, and unfortunately... Um, because of technical issues on our side, we couldn't get a lot of those gems, but we're hoping to get some more you know, insight into this thing. To start things off, uh, I think there's a question that I want to ask. In that, in the previous episode, we explored why Raj and I felt the narrative that Singapore lacks soul from expats is inaccurate and biased. But a lot of people, both local and foreign, feel the same way. What are the things about Singapore and living here that bring about this perception? We've, we've heard of this before. Like, all three of you have traveled quite a bit, right? Like, what is the perception that people have of Singapore? Like, when you guys travel? Sorry, I'm just looking at somebody dancing <laughs> opposite. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> and is he taking yeah. off his no, I, That's what I was looking at. So <laughs> <laughs> sorry for dropp- the distraction. He's, he's dropping on our neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have traveled a lot. And it is, can I assume that not many people know about Singapore when you're traveling? Definitely. Right? First of all, we're not in China. <laughs> and second Point of all, it. since the Trump visit, we're not in Malaysia. <laughs> but we're That's closer true. to home right now. Yeah. So, even though there's a lot of Google search, it really doesn't say much. They yeah. still have the perception that Singaporeans are of only yellow skin, even though we cover a wide spectrum of human colors. Yeah. That annoys me because they just assume we are just one tone color, which I don't think that's true. And they should never just stereotypically define it as us. That is, that is true, Sushan, but at the same time, I think, you know, Singapore doesn't have the media footprint that, let's say, the U.S. has. So, my question here is that when you guys are traveling and you say, hey, you know, I'm from Singapore, like, what is the perception that the person you're talking to has about, oh, Singapore, like, what comes to their mind, or what do they talk to you about, oh, Singapore, like? It depends, because my parents, okay, my sister and my mom, when I went to South Africa in Johannesburg and Cape Town. Okay. It was my sister's uh, graduation trip. This was around what this period of time? Uh, I think in the 2000, the year okay. 2000. Okay. And she had a great time. She didn't have a great time with a conversation with a white lady sitting beside her, them during dinner time, who okay. assumed Singapore was part of China. The waiter, uh, a black African guy, actually knew more about Singapore than the white lady did. She was so much more impressed with the waiter than this, you know, arrogant white lady. Fucking white people. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you want to go back and <laughs> <laughs> follow us? That's a joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it really has the perception that white people tend to think. Okay, I, I hate to say to say 
European descent people tend to think that they have better knowledge than us. I have a lot of comments directed at me saying, are you really from Singapore? Originally from Singapore? You must be from China and just move. I was like, damn, do you know more about my history, my root history than I do? Apparently you seem to think so. So why don't you just make up your own story about me and just not tell me what I should tell you? Wow, okay. But can I ask, Sushan, is that a sentiment that you've experienced with people um, who, who aren't of European descent? Um, no. Okay. Mainly European descent. Um, most other people are a lot more curious. They ask questions. Okay. Rather than they just tell you, oh, shouldn't you be this and shouldn't you be that? So, I mean, in my first year in university, I got to the point where I cook up stories <laughs> about Singapore. Okay. Like we live in a 26 story tree, we have elephants pumping water up for our showers and all sorts of nonsense and then we are just off the coast of uh, Africa. Wow. Wow, that's what that's I tell people yeah. about India. But <laughs> 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 Once again, follow us, it was a joke. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. And because I was so serious, they believed me, but the other group of people who actually knew where Singapore was just couldn't stop giggling. And they were almost killing oh. my joke and... Okay. I don't know, I mean for me, most of the people that I've talked to on my travels, they, they knew about Singapore. I mean, even if they were wrong, they were pretty close. Like this guy, this, this guy at a store in Cincinnati, I mean, he's just spent his entire life in, you know, Ohio mm -hmm. and he's never been out of the country even and he's like, Oh, Singapore. Uh, wait, is that Malaysia? Close enough, you know. Mm. I'll give him that. So, from my experience, like I've said, um, most of the people, they actually know a thing or two about Singapore. At least they know where it is. Mm. That's a pretty good start. And um, no comments or no funny questions about what my color, the color of my skin should be, or what my culture should be. So, you know, pe people who didn't know much about Singapore were pretty open-minded to, to hear more about it. So overall, I think um, it's all right. It's just that <laughs> I'm not the best represent representation of for my country, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. For me, it's like a mix, right? Like I meet a lot of uh, people when I travel. I've, I've been to a number of places. A lot of them like maybe I would say two to three years before like ago they, they would think oh are you part of China we get that uh, most people would be like I oh, your English is really good are you from America you know think things like that happen a lot but in recent years um, especially when I stay in places where you can meet fellow travelers like in hostels most of them actually know where Singapore is, uh -huh. maybe because of you know the environment that we're in, you see a lot of European American backpackers. They come yeah. to Asia a lot. Yeah. They they know what where Singapore is and they want to come here. Um, so so I, uh, at least in recent times, I don't get as much oh you're in China kind of thing. But especially after the Trump Kim summit recently, like I was just in America and most people would be like, oh, you know, I know where Singapore is. I want to go there, you know, yeah. uh, I'll come visit you and things like that. So that really made um, our country a lot more prominent. People know where we are, that we speak English, that we have a beautiful landscape. And like two days ago, I was just watching the Crazy Rich Asians trailer okay. and they featured a lot of the Singapore yes. landscape. And I was actually watching reviews of I mean videos of the people reviewing the movie yeah. and so many reviewing foreigners the trailer, right? yeah reviewing yeah. the trailer yeah. and so many foreigners were like oh now that makes me want to visit Singapore they, they know that it's a, it's a country of its own yeah. like and it's, it's not related to China at all yeah. and, and that, that actually makes me feel really happy I'm really proud of it like basically yeah but it, it's always like a mix you get one of like a few of those people who are I would say a little more ignorant than the rest that still think that we are part of China, but I also get a lot of, a lot more people that, that understand where we are right now. This, yeah. this actually fits into my theory that it takes a rom-com 
to make them cool. <laughs> yeah. Right? And, and you don't comment about the whole media thing. Like, it's actually it's working, you know? Like. It, is, it is bad. Like, I think ever since Crazy Rich Asians, a lot of people are like, oh, where is Singapore? And where do I meet a rich dude? You know? Because <laughs> let's face it, we all like reading and watching stuff about rich people. And that kind of like adds the whole yeah, thing about, does. yes, this country is something mm. that I want to visit. Um, having said this, now the perception of Singapore has obviously gotten a lot more visibility, uh, you know, with recent events, you know, crazy yeah. Asians, um, the, the Trump Kim summit, uh, even people who have never stepped out of their own countries mm. have heard about it, which wasn't the case, let's say, ten years ago. Mm -mm. Um, I, I, I do want to focus on a specific bunch of people who have had opinions about Singapore after living here for a short time, namely, like you know, a, a certain bunch of expats who have talked about. Oh, Singapore is awesome, but there are certain things that they don't appreciate. So, and you guys know this, we've talked about this at great length, and I've always been believed that that kind of opinion is bullshit, but I do hear it so much that I can't discredit um, their subjective opinions. Huh. One of the feedbacks, one of the feedback that I got um, from my brother actually, was that we spent way too much time in the first podcast discrediting other people's subjective opinions, which is wrong, uh. right? So the fact that a lot of people have these opinions means that there is some credence to what they feel. So I'm curious, you know, as, as three Singaporeans here, um, is, there, is there something about life here in Singapore, or living here in Singapore, that bring about that kind of, um, you know, opinions? Uh, you were, we were talking about that particular article about, you know, the, the top values of, of Singaporeans, and let me just quickly bring that up. <laughs> right, so the top ten thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, guys, uh, I will share the link uh, down below. Uh, essentially, this was a survey done uh, among Singaporeans about what the top values of Singaporean society is, and I will let you know in about 40 seconds because Wi-Fi is shit. <laughs> of only, <laughs> <laughs> of only Singaporeans. Yeah, so this is... The survey uh, of Singaporeans. Yeah. So okay. this is a Yahoo Singapore sad. news article. I, have, I didn't read yeah. it. I didn't read I it. I had a quick glance. I mean, it was quite... Actually, it was... It saddens me that those are the top values of Singaporeans today. Okay, yeah. they're actually... I've experienced a number of Singaporeans, fellow Singaporeans, that do not like being in Singapore, or do not like Singapore. Well, to be yeah. fair, I mean, even where I come from mm. in India, you know, there's a lot of us who are like, oh, we hate the situation mm. in our country. We hate like being associated with it. We want to go to greener pastures. And that's, I think mm. that's completely natural. But mm. what but I'm trying to figure yeah. out is that how does this, is this the national narrative or is this just an opinion shared by a few? Mm. And let me just, um, you know, I don't know. Uh, read this well, out Oh, yeah, okay, here, it's right? loaded. Okay. So the title is Top Values of Singaporean Society Include Kyasu, Complaining, Self-Centered. The article says, Kyasu, competitive, materialistic, self-centered, and complaining. These are some of the negative and potentially limiting values that define current society, according to a survey by some 2,000 Singaporeans. The 2018 Singapore National Values Assessment also showed that of the top 10 values that characterize the current society, the respondents only listed three positive values. Educational opportunities, care for the elderly, and effective health care. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <Where's> <laughs> okay. the That's another <laughs> kind of worms that you know, yeah. might not want to open right now. Care. How is that a value? Okay, wait, wait. It was none Maybe of the ones actually working. So. Yeah, no, I mean, this, this came out <laughs> okay. from the Institute of Policy Studies. Okay, I, I have a question. Yeah. What is the sample general... Size? Yeah, sample, sample size 2,000. 2000 but what's the demographic? Yeah. Did they put it there? That's a good question, and I don't think there's enough I think the data needs it. to be more specific. Scrutinized yeah, a lot yeah. more. Mm. But anyway, it is a set of data and is officially published. Okay. So, so we can see the policy studies put out there. Yep. Yep. So yeah. I'm curious, like, uh, as a foreigner who's lived here in Singapore for close to eight years, I tend to disagree with most of these sentiments. Mm. Um, like, I find that these things are generally negative value judgments that people of every country make because, you know, we tend to not focus on the good mm. and focus on the ones that are bad because essentially our subconscious mind is saying that, hey, these are things that we need to work on, so that's why it has bigger emphasis, right? But um, I'm curious about this particular thing, like does this define the national narrative of um, what Singapore is, who Singaporeans are? I tend to disagree with this, and I mentioned this in the previous episode, what do you guys think? 
I think there are certain items on the list that can be both positive and negative at the same time. Uh, it's also, you know, open to interpretation and how it's being, how should I say, practice yep. in real life. Like the number one uh, core value, which is Kiasuism. Yep. Um, I mean, it's it is it is undisputably the number one key, consistently number one key value of Singapore. I would say behavior, not value. I mean, yeah, yeah. But it could be a mindset, oh, yeah. rather. So it really, it governs, I won't say govern, it... Takes precedence. <laughs> yes, and uh, it also makes us how we behave, how we think. Right, everything is about coming on top of competition. Okay. Right, uh, it's about winning. Okay. It's about not being left behind. So it can be taken as something positive. It can be taken as a motivation. Of course, you know, because for people celebrate go getter yeah, attitudes and for better results yeah. and you know for greater things in life. Yeah. Um, but of course, you know, most of the time is being viewed as something not so positive. Um, being competitive, being self-centered, you know, all those bad qualities that has been, that has, that has made it also to the list, and that's also result uh, related to casuism. Mm. But I think casuism is, is not just in Singapore. Right? It's just that the term is coined in Singapore, right? Um, you see this kind of behavior in a lot of other countries. You look at Hong Kong. You know where people spend a lot of money on private education to yep. get into the best school, uh, to to spend a lot of money on sports and things like that. In Korea, like I mean, if you do a survey of the countries and the region, like there's a lot of this behavior yep. um, in other countries, and I don't see why it's so distinctive of Singapore. I, I know that a lot of Singaporeans that I myself were, we were like that. We were being brought up like that, but um, I, I I don't agree that. It is something that is so distinctively Singaporean. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, there is something to be said about demographic pressures, wherein mm. if you have a lot of people in a small amount of space, there's of course you know the competitors will come mm. out. You know, like yeah. you always want to be one Not step ahead really. of others. In any location, even there's a lot of space, but your resources are limited. Okay. That competitiveness will come in. Yes. If you have a lot of resources, no matter how small your area, land area is. You will not achieve that level of craziness. Okay. Okay. It's just amount of resources available, and it's only available to certain groups of people who fight for it. That's what you're gonna get. So can I ask, Sushan, if this is something that is common across a lot of countries and cultures and communities, uh, how has that become a defining trait of Singaporean society? Of all the things you know that can be used to describe it, like why is that at the forefront? You know, um, I, I could say the same thing about India. Like we have a lot of these big cities where this shit happens every day. Like people wouldn't look twice at someone who is trampled over, you know, because at the end of the day, you just want to get by, you want to get ahead, you want to make sure that you have food on the table, and you have like situations where a single job application has ten thousand applicants. Of course, you know that kind of demographic pressure will always bring this kind yeah. of, you know, the Indian version of chaosism, right? Um, what I'm trying to understand is that. You know that doesn't necessarily define, you know, a lot of Indian cultures. There's like a multitude of them. Uh, that doesn't define a lot of um, communities in countries with a lot of people crammed in a small place. Um, why is it the case that Kiasuism is put as one of the defining traits of a country where there is a multitude of things that can be used to describe it? Easy marketing. Yes! <laughs> you're saying exactly what I want, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're leading yeah. us now. <laughs> um, it brings back to another bit of feedback that I received, which is quite interesting. Uh, let, me, let me read it out to you. So, um, so this guy, he talks about, you know, the Eurocentric worldview, uh, cognitive bias, you know, based on exposure. And he has a theory, which is the self-deprecating Singaporean narrative. So what he says is, and I quote, um, I have noticed that while Singaporeans are proud of their city, they never express it. Instead, there is a tendency to focus on the negative aspect of Singapore and Singaporeans. 
this self-deprecation, although it comes from a good place, is picked up by other foreigners who then use that to reinforce their Eurocentric narrative. What do you guys think about that? I don't know. Is it the Asian value of being of humility? It kind of always hit me. It's like, oh, you shouldn't be too proud of something. You should show some modesty and humility, and it kind of brings out the you that don't want to be proud of something okay. that you have achieved. So I it's get not like that. you know for America, it was like rah rah America, and that they, they wear mm. their patriotism and love for their mm. identity on their sleeves, whereas. So you're saying that it this doesn't happen a, here in It could be a value thing. It's like, okay. oh, you shouldn't shout out too much and be too proud and to the point of being arrogant. Okay. But I think somehow that message became something else that made us focus more on our negativity than our positivity. Interesting. Maybe it's just not cool to say I love Singapore, you know? When we're in school, um, every year, I don't know, that there was like, 20 years ago <laughs> like you know uh, peop- uh, the school would made up, make us sing national day songs and like I I personally didn't when I was young I, I currently I, I mean like uh, disclaimer I super love Singapore right now like I really appreciate where we are but when I was really young uh, in, when I was still in school um, it didn't seem cool if we were to sing like national day songs really loudly it didn't seem cool if I were to sing my national anthem like people just pretend to be singing because the teachers would catch us. It didn't seem cool to be singing our school anthem. Like, like when when we were younger, it's just I don't know. To me, it was just wasn't cool cool to say that I I, I love Singapore. Yeah, like that, and that's how yeah. I grew up. And then once I saw the world, like when I started traveling, that that's how I started appreciating how how easy it is in Singapore, how safe it is, how how nice everyone is, how open minded, how diverse our culture is. Yeah. 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 I do have something to share, and it's kind of embarrassing. Um, when I was growing up, I was super proud of the fact that I knew uh, the names of all, at the time, all 50 states in the US and their capitals. Yeah. And I was actually proud of not knowing the capitals and names of the states in my own country. You uh. know? Um, I'm not sure where that comes in, whether there's a sense of like self-loathing of my intrinsic identity, or whether, like, the U.S. for me was like this aspirational, you know, this place that I wanted to be in, and so I tried my level best to get to that point. Um, but it kind of makes me think that you know, when we're growing up, when we're young, we always want to like you know aspire to be something that we think we would fit in, yeah. right? Um, you know, as I grow up, as I mature, I realize that that is not exactly the most healthiest attitude to have. Mm. I'm not saying it's not natural. It, it happens to all of us. Like we always want to be upwardly mobile. We always want to like you know dream and aspire to be someplace or do be something. Um, but I'm curious. Like is, is the experience that you've had similar to that? Like the fact that you know you didn't want to um, you know sing the national anthem because you're like oh I'm too cool for that kind of thing. I think so. Like okay. like when we're younger, it's just you know I, I want to be the cool kid. You know, I don't want to be a geek. I don't want. Yeah. I, I want to be accepted by everyone. You know, I want to be in the in upper yeah. crowd yeah. And, and, and in that circle. That that's why I don't know who set the forefront for that. But the, at that point in time when I was in school, it just wasn't cool. Okay. You know, it was cool to be watching American films. Yeah. It was cool to be listening to like all the boy bands, '90s boy yeah. bands, Backstreet Boys, and whatnot. Who are the Singaporean singers? I don't know. You know, like um, that, that that was then yeah. when when I was young, like growing up. Yeah, but now, up, so yeah. you, you, I mean, I, I remember asking for Singaporean bands, and you were like, you gave me like yeah. three hundred, you know, recommendations. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm two. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, and I, I guess I guess it's natural for all of us, you know, to grow mm. into like loving our identity, and that's mm. pretty nice. Uh, and at the same time, I think the prevalence of American media tends to override pretty much everything, yes. and I don't think it's a fault of ours or our thinking. Um, but I'm just kind of wondering whether this is one of the reasons why um, a country like Singapore, which has its own distinct social identity, which we talked about the last time, it has been like broad stroked with a narrative that is not from Singapore, Mm. you know? Um, And at the same time, there are people who have voiced these same opinions from within Singapore. So it's like, huh, all right. Um, Where where do we stand? Like, where does, where do, Singaporeans stand on this particular thing as a collective. Like, obviously, I, I know that all three of you travel a lot, so you probably have a breadth of opinion that is not shared by, let's say, a significant uh, portion of Singaporeans. But 
if you were to represent Singapore, um, would you say that the current perception of Singapore on a global platform, could you say that that is, uh, what's the word, justified? When you say global platform, you don't mean the people that are saying that we're soulless, right? Um, essentially that, like, okay. what, by, by global platform, I mean like the global perception of Singapore. Like, you know, what is Singapore outside of Singapore? What is Singapore outside of Singapore right now? Uh, like what we talked about earlier, they, they want to come, you know, it's a, it's a country with beautiful architecture, mm. um, um, it's really safe, people speak English, it's going to be easy, you know, that, that's the global perspective. But when we talk about the people that said Singapore are soulless, I have another set of opinions, yep. like why they came about, to, to, you know, they came up with this perspective, like, um, I'm not sure who exactly uh, wrote the article, I didn't read deep into it. I'm not sure what the collective opinion was that in the end the conclusion was that Singapore has no soul. Um, but highly likely if they were travelers, they probably didn't hang out enough with the locals to make that statement. Yeah. If they were expat, um, not everyone's like you, Rindo, that hang out with like a bunch of Singaporeans, you know. Like uh, in Singapore, because it's so diverse and we have people from everywhere, it's so easy to be in your own little bubble. Yeah. I have people that only, I've met people that, you know, like um, stuck with their own country, like nationality, like, oh, this group of French people, this group of Spanish people, they don't step out of the comfort zone to like hang out with enough no locals to probably that's why i think it's a bit skewed like that that opinion about singapore i'm not sure like i once met a, a german I, I told you guys this the other time like i once met a german lady um at a hotel lobby while i was waiting for a friend and i i said hi you know she was just sitting next to me i said hi and she looked so surprised like she was like oh my god this is the first time someone here has taken an initiative to talk to me I've been here three years with my husband, he's here for work. And I was just really shocked, <laughs> like, you know, who have you been hanging out with? You know, people here are really nice. Uh, we talk to people, we make, make a lot of friends from everywhere. We have friends from Brazil, Spain, you know, France. Like, who have you been hanging out with? It's just like, yeah, I've been here three years. Even in my own condo, like, I take the lift and no one smiles at me. Like, okay, <laughs> like, you know, what, what's going on? Like, what, are, what have all these people been... Been, been experiencing like um, that. That's my question. Who who have they experienced enough of Singapore to come up with that kind of statement? Um, yeah, it's actually pretty well documented. And it goes back to and once again, this is something that we touched up on uh, in the first podcast, which is that um, shit was it William Gibson? Yeah, um, he he was the one who coined the term Disneyland the death penalty, mm. and this was just this journalist from Wired, the Wired magazine, um, came down here for a couple of days I think you know talked about this talking about oh you know Singapore has this you know facade of cosmopolitanism but yet on, on the like the underbelly of Singapore is far darker than he had that and then there's another popular blogger Mark Manson who was, uh, said something that was a throwaway line uh. which is the whole reason why we started this podcast so <laughs> fuck you Mark <laughs> <laughs> no um, for one thing you can't really fault them because yeah. that's what of they course, saw of course yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean when I was growing up I I was in university in the US, every European classmate I had just told me the same exact thing. Oh, America has no culture. I said, you just got here. How can you even arrive at that? Oh, I read about this all the time. I'm going, but you're here now. It's different from Europe. So this is a different culture already. Mm -hmm. Why are you not trying to accept it and learn more about it? And it's just, just ramming that statement into every other person foreigner you met okay and okay this is interesting that, that like was america has no culture like what made them think so i mean this is a really during my time it was a <laughs> long time ago it's <laughs> the thing that they, they kind of push into it and they like to say a stupid statement like yogurt has more culture than in america which is not true it, it's something you have to discover yeah. if you don't discover and just base it on other people's experience without going through it yourself it's just like you know in a class in high school as a classmate that everybody avoids because there was a rumor going around and nobody take time to get to know that person okay. this is exactly what's happening around the world each country you yeah. hear so much about Iran been this, Iran yep. been that, or yep. North Korea been this and that, and all the stories, nobody actually 
media been there mm. yeah. see it themselves and mm. I mean to be fair like once again like you guys have mentioned this already that you can't fault them because we have like tons of things in our minds you know we're like we have to deal with thinking about our jobs or relationships and you know thinking about uh, a country from a foreigner's perspective is probably not the the highest priority in our things and everybody's about, experience right? is yeah. different yes. Mm. Yes. so you can't really say oh this is the experience everybody will go through if they come here like come on exactly. like they could be a nicest person that everybody loves and then you had a horrible experience with this person you hated this person you try and tell everybody everybody's going to shoot you down yeah. it's the opposite for everything else so it's like everybody has their own shit that they deal with and everybody's experience is different I, I don't know like look at look at Nas have you have you seen the youtuber or the youtuber yeah Nas, you? Nas, Nas Daily, Daily. Nas Daily yeah. he's broken so many stereotypes get him to come to Singapore and like oh, do he something was here. Yeah? yeah he was he was oh, here. Oh, oh, I'm curious to know what he has to say about yeah, it yeah <laughs> I, I, I love his video <laughs> oh, so Sean, so what I've did, seen what, it what, what did he say yeah. about Singapore I mean he had a great time at our super trees and I was just thinking Okay, you had a great company and everything, but that doesn't really say much about my country as a yeah, whole. Yeah. Uh, and it's just a beautiful tourist. Yeah, it's just that. a okay. beautiful touristy. Like people are nice. Like, it's really not to the point of really introducing the culture. Of course. Mm. Of course. But it was still a nice video. Do, do you know so how many times like Mark and who's the other guy? William Gibson. Yeah, William Gibson came down to Singapore before they published the article. Oh, Mark Manson just showed up here and he's like, oh, so the essential uh, gist of his article was about, you know, how to expand your mental horizons. Okay. So it's like, you know, you got to go travel, you got to do this, and that's how you learn about different things. Mm. And so he talked about, like, when you go traveling, you realize that, you know, many places are very different. Take the example of Singapore. It's an amazing country, you know, it works, it's, it's awesome, it's super efficient, it's like, you know, a diamond in the rough. But it lacks soul. End of story. The and then, like, you know, he doesn't justify he it. He only doesn't came once. It. Yeah, that's it. And he's like, yeah, travel expands the mind. And I'm like, yeah, you know, fuck you. Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. I, I personally, I've been to uh, Paris once. Uh -huh. I, I always tell people I hate Paris. Okay. And then there was once I met a traveler. I super love Paris. You know, like, and then someone else told me you wouldn't. You, you shouldn't decide what a country is or a city is unless you visit it twice. Okay. Then make your decision. Yeah. Yeah. Mark, come back to Singapore. We'll show <laughs> you around. <laughs> yeah, you know, like like I don't know, like it's it's so just how many days? Few days? I'm, I'm not sure. Like yeah. I'm, uh, I, I used to be a fan, but then I think he's uh, yeah. It's not something that I generally follow. Okay. Uh, and essentially, that one line just triggered me. Oh. But you know, hey, if, if, uh, he does have some really good things. Point, good things to say. I'm not like judging your character <laughs> just because of that line, Mark. <laughs> he is entitled to his experience. Of course, he yes, is. Of I course, agree. everyone I agree. is. Everyone yeah, yeah. is. Yeah. And I think that was a mistake that we made in the last podcast where I was super judgmental of people who didn't share the opinions that I had. Okay. So the feedback that I've also got was oh, that, you know... Oh, you grown up! <laughs> <laughs> so so it's like... Uh, l l l let me pull this up again. So the feedback was... Oh, sorry. It was, discrediting a comment doesn't prove a point. Oh. Justifying a comment is equally meaningless. So... I'm just trying to see the other side of the story. Oh. I'm trying to figure out that yes, a lot of people, it's not just one person, it's not two people, there's a fair number of people who have these opinions. So I'm trying to get to the bottom of this. Oh. Like trying to figure out like what is it about it. So I, I think it's fairly obvious from the conversation that I have with you guys that you know media representation plays a part. Um, the fact that the subjective opinions of the people who haven't had the opportunity to, you know, immerse themselves in a culture is one of the reasons why this kind of natural comes out. Um, yeah, no, I think that's pretty much all I have to say. Hey, I think, uh, you know, Mark can write whatever he wants. Yep. And, you know, if that is his opinion, sure. But I think it'll be interesting, at least for me, to find out what how he defines soul. Yep. I mean, he made that, I would say, a rather sweeping statement mm. for, the amount, for the length of time he was in the country. So, I mean, it'll be interesting to know like what his definition of soul is so that you know you can call it justification or whatsoever um you know just so that people would understand 
where he's coming from. Yes. Mm. As I long agree. as we define what he meant by so, and we can all be on the same page. Even we can have a discussion. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. there. Or, I mean, at least people will feel better. Okay, yeah, by your definition of so, we don't have that. So, we're fine. You know, th- that kind of so we kind of not wanted. <laughs> we can actually say that and comfort ourselves at that point. But it's something that we need to know what you yep. meant by so. Are we going to talk about that? We did talk about that during we the did, last... We did. Yeah, there is some more podcast. feedback okay. that I got from someone else. Mm. I've got a lot of feedback about this. <laughs> it's good. It shows good. that you have good friends that tell you what's wrong. Yes. 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 And I'm very appreciative of all of you guys who have given us feedback. Uh, this is how we grow and I'm infinitely grateful. Now, one of the things that was very interesting was that... Um, give me a minute. Um, all right, so, okay, so this is essentially, um, so she was talking about how we focused on the Singaporean narrative being defined by white expats in the first podcast. And so she said, um, and I quote, maybe white people think it's too good to be true so that they find the, they need to find the dark side of the story. Okay, I'm sorry, let me just go back. Um, so this is uh, from one of our friends whose her feedback was, love the feedback. I was also one of these white people who found Singapore was too clean and slowly reconsidered my point of view. The more I learn about Singapore, the more I find this place interesting. Its success story is just amazing. Maybe white people think it's too good to be true, so they need to find the dark side of the story. Wow. Maybe. Mm. Maybe. It feels I mean, like you're back in school and people <laughs> didn't like you when you did better than them and they find ways to destroy your reputation. Wow. <laughs> no, I think, I think it's, uh, it's, 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 it's fair to say so. I mean, uh, we're all brought up to, to this um, statement, you know, nobody's perfect. Yeah. Mm. Right? So it's really going to be... I think almost impossible to believe that anything or any place or anyone is perfect. So when people say, oh, Singapore's perfect, the weather's perfect, the city works, people are nice, and then people go like, so what bad things can we say? Is that why they say we don't have a soul? Like, because it's We're all... Too nice. All, yeah, all they can say is it's too good. You know, like, it's too nice. Like, just now you were, we were talking about how... For strangers that you don't know, she's nice. Yeah, that's <laughs> all. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all. She's nice <laughs> versus doesn't have a soul are very two different things. Yeah, they, they don't have anything else to say. Like. So unless having a soul means I'm dressed in flowery shirt and playing bongo and baracas on the beach, mm-hmm. then, you know, yeah, I would agree. Then yeah. Singapore doesn't have that. Maybe that's, I don't know. We need bongos. <laughs> you know, we need, we need some sort of superficial facade yeah. of colorful, um, you know, things going on in order for people to go, oh, that's Yeah, we so had cool. the horrible haka. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Did we? What was yeah, that? Yeah, so there was, I think... I didn't was, even watch it. Was, I refused I to play the video. I didn't watch it, I didn't read too much it. about so, it. So, uh, for context, uh, this is a video from Keppel Corp. Yep. And uh, they I, I have not seen yeah. it. I can't say. I just read so much about it. I couldn't watch it. <laughs> it is. I mean, it's it's, it's interesting, but it's like it's one of those you know cringy corporate videos. You know, you make up some weird more. stuff, right? Uh. So essentially, it is um, you know a bunch of people from the Keppel Corp. Uh, they make uh, they do this coordinated dance that is very reminiscent of Haka, okay. and this things like what does Keppel stand for? Integrity, you know, quality, uh, honesty. Okay. And then, so oh, my God, uh, integrity uh, after <laughs> that scandal. <laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> After you talk about this, have you guys seen the NDP chair thing where the different no, no, no. corporations yeah, submit? Yeah, that is, that is, that that's is the video. part of it? Yeah, yeah, that's the video. Uh, I watched it at work and I, I was cringing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think um, like, th- there's all these questions about cultural appropriation and uh, a bunch of New Zealand newspapers, you know, covered it and they're like, yeah, that was in bad taste. Um, <laughs> I, d- I don't have any particular opinion about it because like knowing how corporations work, like they're pretty tone deaf when it comes to shit. <laughs> hey, let's do something fun. You know? <laughs> let's check out what's the most fun YouTube video. Oh, it's a YouTube video about Hakka dance. Let's do that. Yeah. And you know, so I, did, I don't think they delve deep into like, you know, cultural understanding and stuff like that. So, you know, I, 
No, 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 like <laughs> once it gets to a point where they want to make money out of anything, you know, we can describe that as not having soul. But then again, that's probably a topic that I also want to um, cover, uh, perhaps not on this podcast. But yeah. one of the more interesting things about when I talk to people about why a particular place doesn't have soul is that they use words like, "Oh, this place is too corporate. This place is too capitalistic." And so there's this idea that um, a capital, uh, you know, a, a society that is driven. Um, by capitalism tends to lack a certain you know human touch which mm. translates to not having so mm. um, you know in the context of Singapore I can understand that the average tourist who comes here you know sees the trappings of capitalist success and you know automatically assumes that oh shit they're all about money of course they don't have soul mm. right um, what do you guys think about it what about food well, you know, we're talking about the average tourist who doesn't give a shit about food because he's like, oh, yeah, you know, I just want some cool pictures for my gram. You know? So, uh, um, but it, it's interesting because I think a lot of questions about whether something is human, whether something has whole, is also dependent on how they perceive um, the quest for money is, is seen, you know? Like, if you see someone who is unabashedly um, chasing riches, fame, and fortune, you know, we often consider that person as, you know, like, ah, oh man, he's just, he's just all about the money. You know, he's not all about, you know, connections and having that. Do you guys, like, I don't know, I, I grew up in, in a culture where um, lusting after money was considered a bad thing. It's tacky to talk about money, which has its problems because uh, a lot of us are just not financially literate and it's going to be a huge problem much later in life. But the thing is that we've always grown to believe that, ah, you know, lusting after money is weird. You know, it's, it's not classy. You know, it's, it, it shows that you lack compassion and shit like that. And I wonder if a tourist's superficial understanding of Singapore, namely, you know, the, the, the high-rise banks, you know, all the trappings of capitalist success make them feel that, oh, this, this place is all about money, which is why I think this doesn't have soul. Like, they're not going past that skyline, you know, to see what uh, the innate culture of the country is about. Possible. But they're like, oh, look at that glass and concrete. Look at that Starbucks. Yeah, it's all about the money. But it is true. It I mean, is to true. a certain mm -hmm. extent, Singapore, unfortunately, due to our short time as a country is it is all about money because I think we are not we're different from a, a okay we have no resources without money we can't get water yeah. we can't get food supply we can't get anything and it's also because um, we are not like uh, countries in Europe mm. where you have a good social security system yeah. um, good pension programs uh, back in the day 401k in the US um, Singapore I mean yes there's a CPF but you know that's a whole different topic altogether <laughs> uh, I would love to talk then. about it I would love to talk about maybe it maybe in the next podcast <laughs> but, but yeah I mean in Singapore if you don't support yourself if you don't make money you are just going to die hmm. no one's gonna care about you not, uh, the government. not the government not your neighbors not your colleagues well if you're not working you won't have any <laughs> um, not the not the whole friendly taxi driver who smiles at you if you take his taxi um, no no one so it's really about getting the dough <laughs> Bring the doll back home. You're right. Right. So, so we don't have a choice. That's how. It, that's how we are brought up to mm. be. That's how we are brought up to think, and that's what we're brought up to do. Mm. I I completely agree. It's not like you're you're, you're living in a, one of the South Pacific islands. You can just fish. You can plant. We don't even have land for us to do agriculture. Yes. You know, like we we cut. <laughs> And we're Derek is pointing at some potted plants and he's like, yes, that's agriculture. 
<laughs> for me, yeah. Wow. Right? Plants. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's expensive, you know? Yeah. Like, we have to pay for food, yeah. water, everything. It's important to have money. And, yeah. it's and things are getting more and more expensive. There's mm. inflation to consider. Uh, you know, property, uh, houses, getting a place, uh, getting a roof over your head. Yeah, it might be still affordable for some Singaporeans, sure. One shit loads. But, um, you know, but it, those, those days are coming to an end, right? So, no one's going to take care of you. No. You've got to take care of yourself. Mm, I, I completely agree. And Does that also drive... Um, what we talked about earlier, does that also drive um, casualism? Like the fact Absolutely. that... Absolutely. I know, mean, it's more for drive for survival. Thinking about safety important, yeah. Survival, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, basic animal instinct is survival. Yeah. And for us, we're brought up to think, this is how we're going to survive. Unfortunately, everything's going to be in terms of money. That was true. And, you know, it's the 21st century, and I think money's going to drive pretty much everything. I just don't understand why people have this hang up about, oh, you know, to think about money is to, like, uh, no, it's just weird, just don't talk about it. Uh, why, I, why, why is it weird though? Like, if, even if you go to some place, for example, Cambodia, you go to the Angkor Wat, you get people, even kids, all coming up to you, wanting to buy, yeah. you know, postcards, touristy stuff. That, that's also chasing money. Why yeah. does it, why, why do people not think that, you know, that that's soul is or like that's bad that's because you know uh, it's still Cam survival you know yeah but, but you know Cambodia has like <laughs> that Asian grittiness that people look for <laughs> it's like oh there's dirt in the streets yes it's and, got soul <laughs> and interestingly that you brought that up um, well, from my personal experience in let's say Southeast Asian countries mm. Cambodia Thailand and whatnot um, the people who live there who I've interacted with um, even if it's not about the money, even if they don't, you know, demand for anything extra, or tip or whatever, they're actually genuinely friendly. They okay. want to know more about you. I made friend with this tuk-tuk driver in in Cambodia, and he was just driving me around for a couple of days. And in those couple of days, I learned more about his family than I know about my colleagues family oh. right I know about their struggles they survive on four US dollars a day family of four you know he tells, tells me about his parents where he learned his English what dreams he has for his son um, what he thinks about his countries the government yeah. <laughs> I even asked him what you think about those pesky tourists <laughs> that you have been driving around day in day out and you know so I think in Singapore I'm not saying everyone of course I think we have in the midst of surviving if you would we have cast aside it's not like it's not in us but we've cast aside the how should I say the human side of us? Maybe if you if I use for for lack of a better word. So I having spent time on the west coast of the US, I miss I really, really miss those times where I could just sit down next to a stranger in a subway or the restaurant or just standing in line waiting for the loo. I could just talk to the person next to me like hi how are you what's it go how's it going um you know oh they'll tell you where they're going and uh, what just happened or anything interesting mm. the other day things like that so yeah that's something that i miss so i think for singaporeans they're like hmm, okay i have to keep to myself um i don't want to i don't want to waste time knowing other people spending the five minutes of my commute just yeah. talking yeah. I rather consume uh, I mean conserve my energy take a quick nap listen to my own music go through my emails and get things done actually that I've got to disagree though like I don't know like I, I'm, I'm the kind that I sit in the MRT I talk to the auntie next door and she would tell me where is she going you know what's happening and and I, I, I know for majority of Singaporeans 
it's weird to do that but if you do maybe it's just not in our culture to take the initiative I don't know but if you do you get a lot out of people like in my company at least like it's a small startup but I know every one of my colleagues daughter, son, what's happening, how, what grade he has in school, what teaching teacher he has, you know, all these, if, if you take the effort, you would find out, like, I'm, I'm sure in other countries, like in the US, there are people like the typical Singaporeans that we're talking about that, that don't make the effort and don't get that out of people, so that, that's a very subjective, like very personal thing that it, it really depends like yeah what you do i like, mean no, in right. sunpat so yeah. new york you have the same kind like in singapore you don't want to talk to strangers same as in london i don't want to talk to you don't talk to me and then you have the other extreme mm. who just get so bored they'll look at you and smile and talk yeah but no, no, for no, me no. Yeah. i mean even me back in singapore if i'm standing in line waiting for my food to be I talk to whoever's standing yeah. in front of behind me. It's like, what you ordering? <laughs> Have you tried that? Was it yeah, good? I get, I get that a lot. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I and do this. Even fair, my like, dad, you know, my dad. That's where most of the conversation happens. Yeah. Like, my colleagues are like, oh, <laughs> really? so you have this random person yeah. like my sitting thing. right next to us. Yeah. It's like, oh, what's that? Where did you get it? Which is stuff? Is <laughs> yeah. it good? It's food, is it right? It? Yeah, yeah, exactly. My, my dad <laughs> is one of the most conservative, like typical Singaporean Asian you can think of and he he talks to people in the hawker center and i'm like surprised you know like it happens like if, yeah, if yeah. there's a common thing to talk about like food is a big thing in singapore yeah. in a lot of in a lot of asia and and that works like you just need to start and take that first step and and people talk to you i once got offered a job while lining up to go into a club like it's a legit job british company you know the things like that happen if if you put in the effort so maybe that might not be I don't know. I, to me, that's not a valid point. It's <laughs> interesting that you bring that up because yeah. there was this uh, conversation that's happening on Reddit, which I which I frequent. And um, so what one guy said was that, uh, okay, now this is like broad stroking. So this is this dude who said the reasons why Singaporeans don't get ahead in their jobs is because they don't socialize at bars after work. <laughs> and then the the uh, rebuttal from yeah. another person was that that's because we prefer to socialize over food. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> so, and it made sense, right? Because yeah. I actually have a lot more animated conversations among my local friends in a hawker center than a bar, which is like for some people that's probably a, a good way to socialize. Yeah. And for other people, it's it's a hawker center, so it's like the inability to understand that socializing happens, you know, in a place outside of what that person is comfortable with is probably the reason why he makes errant statements like these. But yes. yeah. I, I just thought mm. that out there. Yeah. So. And the two people that like, were on, a, on another occasion, like I got offered another job, like hit hunting job, like was in a bar at Club Street. Okay. And th these two people, one's British, the other one's American, they're not typical Singaporeans. Okay. Usually, Singapore, it's always about food. Yeah. yeah. Like, we go out for a meeting, oh, let's meet over lunch. Yes. Dinner, you know, like, yes. even when we talk about sales or like, anything it's always about food exactly yeah. uh, in the company that i work for um uh, our asean md is singaporean and when people visit from elsewhere uh he takes them to like these really cool places to eat mm. like these other places and that's that's what he's about you know so yeah. that's where they talk that's where they you know socialize and understand each other better whereas uh the foreigners in my company tend to prefer doing it in a bar yes right so it's just maybe that mark didn't go to like good restaurant <laughs> No, maybe he just or went to the bar. Take some yeah. notes, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> it's just getting to know a culture and how people yeah. socialize. Yeah. I mean, you can't just assume the whole world socialize in a bar. Yeah. So. Although we do a fair bit. We do. We do. <laughs> we do. Even, <laughs> even our friends that don't drink alcohol, they go to the bars yeah. with us. <laughs> But are we representative of Singapore? We are not. Scenario? Like I, I am, I've been told that I am not. Like, I don't know. I, I talk love to Singapore, people while waiting yeah. for my turn to go to the ladies' room. So, like, I think that's fine. I make friends that way too. Like, yeah, you connect where you connect. Right? No, I, like, I, I mean, I'm not saying that that is not possible here. It's just that from personal experience. I got more of that on the West Coast, and yes, New York, uh, places like New York, you're never gonna get that. I agree, but on the West Coast, it's just everywhere. It's, it's just everywhere. It's Tinder. It's really in your <laughs> face. You don't even need Tinder, I think. <laughs> so it's really in your face, like how people are willing to talk to you yeah. and take the initiative. It's like, just that exactly. when I first came back, 
I try. I even I try because it's so ingrained in me. I start yeah. talking to people and people look at me weird. Okay. Just gave me one-liners and you know, yeah. just shut your face. I I got I got that a little bit after I stayed in Netherlands for eight months. I came back to Singapore. I was so used to like just saying hi, talking to people, and in school, like where I meet a lot of other Singaporeans, they. It was weird. Like, okay, well, why okay. are you smiling at me? Like, <laughs> what do you want? But it's, it, I don't exactly. Need it's like, what, are, what do you okay. want? Why yeah. are you talking to me? Okay. You're freaking me out. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It really depends. Like, yeah. I, re- I think it really depends. I guess cool. if you're used yeah. to people who want to talk to you when they need something, this is the natural reaction you'll get. Yeah. That's true. Fortunately, a lot of people grow up not talking to their friends, and when they actually call them, it's to sell them insurance. Yep, yep, that, that's happened way too many times for me. And then you? I've been to a lot of MLM uh, meetings. They're like, hey, let's catch up for coffee. And I'm like, oh shit, I haven't talked to the guy in a while. Let's just be nice and talk to him and have lunch and all that. Uh, He's like, hey, by the way, this cool thing you want to check out. Do you want to check it out? I'm like, okay, fucking MLM. So, yeah, <laughs> this yep. happens a lot. Um, not just here, like everywhere, like even back in India, yeah. it just happens a lot. It does. So there's going to be a lot of people who will want to you know, use that connection to their advantage and it happens. But I, I would disagree with the idea that um, people here in Singapore um, wouldn't communicate if not for any person's advantage. Okay, mm. uh, it's like I, yeah, you know, depends. Yeah, I mean, but then again, you have well, a whole spectrum of communication, yeah. right? Like, so I wouldn't say that one particular side of communication is representative of Singapore. Mm. Like, and I, I, I'm not gonna lie, like I do find. Um, like in the US and admittedly I haven't been to the US for too long but in the week that I was there I, I actually preferred to sit in the front uh, like the, the front seat of an Uber because the conversations were actually pretty fun yeah you know because and then I was also new it was my first time so I'm like curious to know about all this uh, stuff and it's like yeah come sit with us and talk about that stuff so that has colored my experience about what Americans are like because they're like oh they're friendly they're effusive you know they talk a lot like a lot and <laughs> this is coming from me you know? I, I do that in Singapore yeah. like people don't right like usually <laughs> I don't know pe- uh, so I, <laughs> this morning when I went to the rugby games like I took a Uber uh, I took a grab because I woke up late and I had a half an hour conversation with the driver uh-huh. about rugby uh-huh. and that 17 year old Singapore guy that didn't get his deferment for Ennis Ben Davis you know yeah. like yeah like this things happen if you make the effort like of course look like you're friendly look like you don't mind having conversation and people talk to you and, yeah. and they would and they mm. would and I think uh, in this respect I believe that for a lot of expats this was a conversation that I had someone a long long time ago um, and it was not here in Singapore it was in India so mm. this is someone who was from elsewhere uh, he was in India and he had a hard time um, you know socializing not because of any inherent inability to communicate with Indian folk it was mostly because he was here on a job, right? Uh, his entire life revolved around it. And outside of his job, he didn't have enough mind space to do anything else. So in his mind, he was like, shit, there's the job, there's things you got to worry about, there's money, and he wasn't, he was homesick. Mm. You know, so all of these factors, you know, didn't allow him to socialize or immerse himself in, mm. you know, the city that we were living in. And to his credit, he didn't, broad stroke Bangalore as being a place with no soul or place with something. Bangalore's fucking amazing. Yeah, guys. go to, go to Bangalore. Bangalore's amazing. Yes. And uh, <laughs> but like I think I, I you know I, was, I just remembered this quite recently and I realized that yeah you know it's it's not because a, a lot of expatriates think that their opinion is that of world expert. It's mostly because at that point in time you know they felt a certain way because of circumstance. And so they probably didn't have the opportunity to, to go around do their thing. Mm. And so their recollection of that particular country or city is always based on, mm. oh shit, that high pressure job. Mm. You know, all the times that he was eating off of vending machines for months. Yes. You know, so. I, I agree. And they don't sit down and discuss about it. They yeah. don't analyze it. And yeah. then they don't realize it. Yeah, yeah. yeah which, which, which is important. Like, yeah. you know, there's a lot of things that we don't think about until we start talking about exactly. it. And like, Ah, that that happened, you know. Yeah, like maybe yeah. that's why. Yeah. And this is also one of the reasons why we started this podcast because I've listened to a lot of stuff about Singapore from the perspective of a foreigner. We listen to a lot of stuff, uh, you know, about Singapore from the perspective of a local. And uh, Raj and I thought about this, like, because 
this podcast would be about the both of us, a foreigner and a Singaporean, talking about the same things, and maybe it would be, you know, an exchange of ideas that would be beneficial to both me and him. Yeah. You know? So So this time around you're outnumbered. <laughs> yeah. You are. Once again, <laughs> fuck you Raj. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be four to one. Is wake, that, how wake, is that even Wake better? up, Raj. <laughs> <laughs> is he uh, still in bed? Um yeah, I'm not sure. like I said, we'll, we'll meet him uh, later on. Um, I, I guess, I, I guess we can wrap this up. What do you guys think? Yeah. Um, any closing thoughts, guys? Be open-minded. Yeah, I think regardless of what whatever it is that you do or say, it is it is important to understand the background, mm. the circumstances. Yes. Um, and the situation mm. so a little bit of perspective will help yeah. um, you know in terms of uh, making how should I say unbiased statements I would say mm. yeah yeah Link? they, they summed it all up yeah <laughs> it's great woo Singapore <laughs> <laughs> go Singapore it's our birthday next week yeah I love Singapore fuck you those Singaporeans that don't love Singapore <laughs> I've met w- oh <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about Wrapping it. up. Yeah, wrapping <laughs> up. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, once again, all of you guys for listening, uh, thank you for tuning in. Um, you know, please follow us on SoundCloud, and we hope to uh, get this up on iTunes and Spotify soon. So let's see how that goes. Uh, you know, as usual, please, we welcome any kind of feedback, good, bad, ugly. Just give, you know, tell us what you feel about this episode or any of the other episodes before. Tell us what you think. And you know, we hope to do more. Then we will get your friends to t- follow. Yes, yes, smash that like button. Oh, wait, does SoundCloud have like? Yeah, they do. They, they do. do. Yeah, yeah okay. they do. Yeah, they yeah, do. Yeah. But yeah, hopefully we'll move out from that because SoundCloud has a you know we got to pay for it um, after ninety minutes. Oh. So oh. Yeah. <laughs> or let let us know what topic you'd like to hear. Next. Yes. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you're right, <laughs> guys. Like Link said, if you have anything that you feel you want us to talk about, we're happy to talk about it. Um, our podcast is all about Singapore. It's about living in Singapore, life in Singapore, um, from all perspectives. So please um, send in your thoughts, your opinions, and you know. And on that note, um, Derek, Sushant, Link, it was awesome having you here again. <laughs> this time, we are sure that we've captured audio perfectly. And once again, what you've given us is solid gold, and I'm really appreciative you guys have done that um so guys uh this is sunny signing out see you next time bye bye